Welcome to another session of painting an acrylic portrait of John Bunyan, part six. And in this painting, I am continuing the process of working on this miniature painting, this eight by 10 painting of John Bunyan, just adding some detail to his eyes using raw umber dark diluted with matte medium, which is a clear acrylic medium that makes the paint fluid and develops blending and luminosity techniques and it really really makes a big difference especially in a small painting like this where um, it's so important to get a chisel point on your brush so i'm just dabbing the surface with that glaze of raw umber dark and i'm going over some of the darker values like the area between his mouth and mustache and also just dabbing that a little bit with my finger to soften the edges. And I'm going to continue to work some detail into his face. Now I'm switching to titanium white with just a little bit of Indian yellow mixed in um, to add a little bit of that highlighted area where the light would be striking right on his lips and then on his um, concentric eyelid folds below his eyes. And that gives this painting just a little more depth. We just had a bug crawl across the painting. Uh, that, that will happen from time to time, especially when you're painting in an outbuilding like I have. It's not completely finished off. All right. I'm adding a little bit of detail to his mustache and darkening that now using raw umber dark mixed with just a little bit of alizarin crimson to warm it up and of course some matte medium just to give it a little more fluidity and then i'm also darkening the shadow underneath his chin and neck area jawline giving that some more contrast because in that area between his jawline and his hair not much light will be shining there especially since he's in a prison and there's probably only one light source which would be the window in front of him and so we really want to um, show that look that you know we're just capturing um, a very dark cell and he was in prison for preaching the gospel i've shared this before in the other uh, segments of this video of this uh, painting in progress uh, but he was imprisoned for sharing the gospel for preaching without a license and back in the 1600s in england it was illegal to preach unless you were authorized by the anglican church at that time and so he was imprisoned for that and wasn't able to see his family which is a definitely a struggle he had to deal with but during that time he was able to write one of the most famous books of all time, Pilgrim's Progress, second only in popularity to the Bible. And so the idea of this painting is to show him um, pensive and lost in thought as he's thinking about what words to write next uh, in his book. And he has his hand resting maybe on the scriptures, and then he's also looking um, for... Uh, inspiration as he writes now at this stage i'm adding a little more opacity to the shadow um, coming from his neck area from his chin i should say onto his neck and i'm mixing a little bit of titanium white with some raw or dark and just a bit of ultramarine blue and we're just basically making that shadow a little more opaque a little more substantial um, and I want to get just the right tone. It's, it's just a little too light. I need to darken that up just a bit. And then I can blend that in. I'm, st I'm using a really small brush, just a, a very small round brush, I believe a one-aught brush, and just blending out of those darker areas into the light and developing those nuances. Now I want to get a little bit of a harsher edge. Um, on this shadow, so I'm taking some almost pure titanium white and just um, bringing that across and really developing a nice harsh edge there, showing that contrast. I wipe my brush off on the side a little bit. If I have too much paint on the bristles and it's not flowing correctly, 
you'll notice from time to time, I just kind of wipe that off. And it's a really quick way to get your brush to a chisel point. And to make sure that the paint is very, very fluid as it's flowing off the bristles. Now I want to add a little more contrast to the lapel on the left hand side and I'm using titanium white and now going to the lapel on the right hand side so basically just straight titanium white maybe with just a bit of Indian yellow mixed in to warm it up and I'm going to see where else can I employ that titanium white and we'll put it on on the book that's resting in front of him and also on the other book so that's probably a bible in front of him and then this would be you know where he's writing pilgrim's progress and we're just showing uh, that book as well so just strengthening the contrast because the light would really be striking those pages brightly um, because they are white and they are aimed in the direction towards the window light so um, that will really enhance that to add the white to that area. Also, we're adding the white to his sleeves, and that would be catching some of the light as well. And so I'm adding that same mixture of titanium white um, mixed with just a little bit of matte medium to make it fluid. Now I'm putting a little bit of a cuff and edge on his clothing. You know, because back in those days they had those puffy sleeves and I'm trying to emulate that look. I modeled for this painting um, and set up the photo shoot for it. You can see the rest of the series of videos. They're all here in the playlist if you want to check out the other videos showing the entire process from start to finish. And then I will be showing a last video, um, which will be the seventh of this series. And that'll be coming out pretty soon. Um, you can check that out as well. Definitely subscribe to this channel. And you'll, you'll be notified when the last video of this series comes out. And when I also have some other videos, like the uh, portrait painting challenge, it'll be coming out in spring. Um, definitely subscribe to this channel. Click the bell icon and get notified when I come out with new videos too. So, all right, back to... The video here and what's going on. Um, so I'm just defining this edge here um, of his quill, you know, where it's actually hitting the paper that he's writing on. So I'm trying just to use a very, very light approach to get that very thin line for the quill. And I'm again using basically just titanium white. I can glaze over it, give it a little color, but I want to just use a light color to show it in contrast against the background. I'm using a little bit of burnt sienna, raw umber dark to just define the edge of his suit, his, his uh, coat, I should say, against the collar. And then now I added a little more raw umber dark to the mix and I'm strengthening the shadows within his clothing. Because you want to make sure in a painting that you have your value key synonymous with all the other areas. In other words, if you have a dark area in one spot of your painting, a very dark value, you want to repeat it in other parts. And look in your reference photo for similar values and identify them. And then try to put them in at the same time. It might take a few layers, but uh, overall you want to really work your painting as one harmonious piece and not just isolated segments. So that's why I'm moving all over and adding these dark values, not only to his clothing, but also, you know, around the table and anywhere else where it's going to really help the overall impact. I'm getting just a little more contrast on the edge of his clothing. I'm going to have to change up my color just a bit and make sure I have the right tone. Here I'm going just a little bit lighter on that edge right by his, uh, his sleeve and the chest. 
and darkening that shadow just underneath his lapel. And now I want to make sure I'm isolating all of the values and adding a little bit of gradation as well. So I lighten up this glaze, adding a little more burnt sienna and have something to segue out of those darkest values into the midtone and add just a little bit of gradation as well. So you can see this color that I'm applying is not only a little lighter in value, but it is also a little bit warmer in tone too. And typically the rule of thumb is that the lighter the color is, the lighter the color is, the warmer the tone should be. Or I should say the lighter the value, the warmer the tone. You, you, you definitely want to think about that. It's a, a rule of painting. It can be broken sometimes, but typically it's going to hold true for most of the, the paintings that you'll do, especially in portraiture. So I'm adding those slightly lighter value, warmer tones um, on top of his clothing. I already have a good solid foundation to work on from the previous layers, and that makes things so much easier. Now I'm just defining the edge of the highlighted portion of his coat against the background and just uh, going with a little bit of a darker color to match. I, I had to change the color temperature, make it cooler. I wouldn't want to use brown for that. Instead, I you know add a little bit of ultramarine blue and cool it down so it matches that cooler color in the background. And cooler colors recede, warmer colors come forward in space. Um, so that works well, not only to cool it down in that respect, but also to match the, you know, color temperature you'd expect for a stone wall. And now while I'm at it, I'm adding a little more detail to the bricks themselves and just adding some shadows with a very darker color going just on the bottom edge of these stones, these bricks. And you can see I use my fingers quite a bit to kind of wipe the paint and smear it a little bit and that really allows you to develop some nuances. It's a little bit of an unorthodox technique but it works really well when you're glazing and if you want to get those smooth effects you don't mind getting a little bit of paint on your fingers I would encourage you to give it a try. Acrylic paint is non-toxic it's not going to hurt you and it's very easy to wash off. Well, now I'm adding a little bit uh, of the darker color just for the interior of his eyes. I want to really show the detail of his irises and pupils. And I've got to get that brush just to a really, really fine point to get this to work. And then I'm just taking a little bit of titanium white mixed with some Indian yellow and adding that nice little pinpoint of light to show the light glistening on his eyes. Now, this is a very difficult part. Of painting when you're doing such a small painting, such a tiny face on your canvas. You've got to make sure your hand is steady, make sure your paint is fluid, make sure your brush is to a fine point, and then you have to use a very light amount of pressure um, because having that highlight off by even just a, a millimeter or less than a millimeter will make a world of difference. So I'm darkening just the right side of his eyes and really wanting to show, you know, that look of him kind of looking upward intensely as if he's lost in thought. Maybe he's praying silently to God as he's, as he's writing uh, Pilgrim's Progress. And just want to really capture that emotion in his face. Um, using a little bit of titanium white again, Indian yellow, to show the... Uh, concentric eyelid folds that little fleshy area under his eyes and the way that would be a bit furrowed now I'm coming in with some shadows just to strengthen those wrinkles underneath and using a little bit of burnt sienna pyro red orange and just to show the furrowed look of those wrinkles under his eyes now I'm just blending the edge and adding a little bit of shading to the right side 
uh, because that portion will be in shadow. And I'm extending a little bit of a wrinkle downward from there into the cheek area using a bit of uh, raw umber dark and burnt sienna. And now blending that into this, the temple area of his face, showing just a bit of crow's feet wrinkles, trying to isolate the eye socket from the rest of his forehead. And I think that makes a big, big difference. Darken that whole right side of his face that is in shadow. Don't be afraid to get your dark values as dark as they should be. It makes a big difference to develop that contrast. And now I'm just adding a little bit of shading to his chin. Just want to show the round form, um, getting a bit of contrast between his neck and the light color of his collar. And we're getting pretty close to the end of this segment here in this portrait painting. I just want to add a few more nuances to his cheek, just show the roundness of that form. And using warmer colors for the cheek, especially as we get close to the highlights, I'll just dab it a little bit and then give it more of a nuance. And I want to get a little more contrast between his hair and his cheek, so I'm darkening that left side of his hair to really help his cheekbones to stand out. I'll bring his eyebrows out a little bit past his skin there just to show that angle. And that's a really, really tricky part, but I want to make sure I'm doing it correctly. And here we come up to about the end of this segment. And I want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, there will be a seventh one, so keep an eye out for that. And if you'd like to find out more about what I do and how I can help you paint portraits you can be proud of, check out Realistic Acrylic Portrait School. And I'd love to help you out there. Thanks so much for watching.